It's often called the Canadian dream. Practicing, playing, working towards just one goal. Someday making it to the NHL. But that dream isn't exclusively Canadian. For Max Starchenko, Andrei Lupandin, and Gennady Razin, the dream was born in Kharkov, Ukraine, thousands of kilometers away from this rink in Edmonton. Like back then, you know, we, we all dreamed of and wished to play on the, you know, professional hockey, and that, that's why I'm still playing. I would, I would like to play in the NHL. The three have known each other since they were young boys, born and raised in the then communist Ukraine. Teammates on Druzba 78. Druzba is Ukrainian for friendship. 1978 is the year that all of the players were born. The man behind the team was Ivan Pravilov, the one and only coach the boys ever had. They were a traveling team, winning tournaments and turning heads around the world from the tender age of eight. It blew me away, quite frankly. Anybody who watched them thought they were just absolutely outstanding. Walter Babby organized two of Druzba 78's visits to Western Canada. He is a farmer and former teacher from Cherville, Alberta, just outside of Edmonton. He's also a former hockey coach, but had never seen players like this. Well, virtually in all aspects, in their skills, their stick handling ability, certainly their skating, without any question, their lateral movement, puck pursuit, tremendous puck pursuit, and tenacity. They were just fabulous there. This is Walter Babby's home video from a visit to Kharkov, Ukraine. The team's locker room was a shrine to their greatness. Banners and memorabilia from all of the towns and tournaments they played in. The only thing missing was electricity. Thanks to the Ukraine's battered economy, the boys had to dress by candlelight. The other luxury deemed too expensive in Kharkov was ice. Instead, they trained on rollerblades, a unique routine that paid big dividends. Their practice intensity was just phenomenal. Their off-ice activities in terms of uh, dryland training and so on, you know, it was very intensive and uh, they, they paid attention to detail. The coach insisted on that. This practice regimen was second to none that I've seen ever anywhere in my hockey experiences. The players first stepped foot in North America in 1992 at the world-renowned Pee Wee tournament in Quebec City. It was the year after the fall of communism in their homeland. From the very beginning, it was obvious that Druzba 78 was a special team. Patrick Dom is the general manager of the Quebec Pee Wee tournament. A lot of people are watching the tournament for years and years and you know, it was the best team ever played here mm -hmm. in, this, in, the, in 43 years of, uh, of history. And you still say that today? Yes. Even a week before the tournament started, Druzba 78 was getting a lot of attention. It all began with this CBC French television story about the visitors from Ukraine. How these 12-year-old boys arrived in Canada with hockey equipment older than they were. Bonjour. The response Bonjour. was overwhelming. Quebec City adopted the team. People donated new equipment, clothes, and food. Druzba 78 was the sensation of the tournament. When people saw that, they started bringing stuff here for this kids. You know, it was here at the Northwest Door, and people bringing some stuff, said, that's for the Ukraine team, that's for the Kharkov 78 Druzba team. You know, the, it started, you know, like a snowball, very small, and then after it, things going, go up very, very quickly. <laughs> True to the fairy tale script, Druzba 78 went on to win the championship game. Hard work. Today, Lupandin, Starchenko, and Razin spend much of their summers in the Edmonton area, visiting the families they billeted with on one of their Canadian tours. Like chores on the farm, their hockey dreams are never ending. You might say Gennady Razin also spends his winters on the farm. Last season with the Quebec Citadels, the farm team of the Montreal Canadiens. Wheat Kings work it back. Lots of Andre Lupandin is also playing pro hockey. The former Brandon Wheat King is now an East Coast League All-Star with the Greensboro Generals. Max Starchenko is still in school, a senior and academic All-Star at Wayne State University in Detroit. 
Incredibly enough, 11 of the 19 players from Druzba 78 went on to play pro hockey in North America. Five players were drafted by NHL teams, two of them in the first round in 1996. Andre Zuzin was selected second overall by the San Jose Sharks. He now plays for the Minnesota Wild. Dana Zubris was drafted by the Philadelphia Flyers. He now plays for the Washington Capitals. Zubris is a big guy, yeah. six foot two, 200. Even those closest to Druzba 78 have difficulty explaining how so many players from an industrial town near the Russian border could go on to have such great success. Simply comes from their dedication or not a lot of alternatives in Ukraine for, for these boys, especially with the disintegration of Soviet Union. And you, you, you know, you became a street boy perhaps or something like that if you weren't playing hockey or, or weren't involved in some athletic endeavor. At the time, Coach Pravlov was given much of the credit for the boys' success. It was his attention to detail, some said, that set Druzba 78 apart from other teams. He groomed him and he drilled him and he groomed him and he drilled him. And it's a question of repetition the many, many thousands of repetitions for one specific exercise to get it precisely correct. And there was no deviation from this correctness. On the surface, Druzba 78 was the perfect team. However, as early as the Quebec City tournament in 1992, there were signs that things were not quite right. Now, after the tournament, after the donations, the coach is asking for more money. And many Quebecers are saying, get lost. Following the championship game, Ivan Pravlov was confronted by both billets and media accusing him of fraud and confiscating gifts that were given to the players. In the early days of the tournament, Pravlov announced that the team was $10,000 in debt and needed money to continue a Canadian tour. The donations poured in, but so too did the controversy. The organization Ruch called me back and told me that uh, he was sponsored by the town of Kharkov and that we should not give him money. <laughs> Pravlov defended himself at every turn, but the affair cast a dark cloud over what had been a wonderful North American debut for Druzba 78. And more importantly, it hinted that as good as the team was on the ice, there were some serious issues off of it. When we return, the painful secrets behind Druzba 78. He punched kids. Yes, he did. Kicked them. Yes, he did. Hit them with hockey sticks. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I, I gotta admit this, and uh, nothing I can do about it. Druzba 78 was a hockey phenomenon, a team of Ukrainian teenagers who took North America by storm throughout most of the 1990s. Dubbed the Globetrotters on ice, they packed hockey rinks from Manitoba to Mexico, putting on a display of skating and stick handling rarely seen in players twice their age. In 281 games, they lost just 15 times. Despite that record, Ivan Pravilov rarely seemed pleased with the team's performance. He was a little on the wild side. He was not wild side, but crazy. He would just go nuts. If we lose a game or if we would even win a game and we wouldn't play good, he would be mad at us all the time. And at stake for Pravlov was the team's reputation, not just a matter of pride, but cold cash. As word of Druzba's success spread, he received thousands of dollars in appearance fees and travel expenses from the different tournaments and towns they played in. Actually, the most of the fun that we had playing hockey, or I had, when we were, before we came to North America. Because when, it, when we came to North America, it was kind of business to our coach. So it was, we kind of had to win instead of just kind of like, you know, going and playing. 
For years, the extent of Pravlov's anger was known only to his players. They claim what began as verbal abuse quickly escalated. After the game, I made some play, bad play or something like that, and he just beat me up so bad. I had a black eye, wasn't great. Four. We had a class picture the next day, and there is me, 10 years old with a black eye, and he made me tell my parents that I got hit with the stick by some other player in the game. And tell me if I'm right or wrong from what uh -huh. I... Go ahead. He punched kids. Yes, he did. Kicked them. Yes, he did. Hit them with hockey sticks. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I, I gotta admit this, and uh, nothing I can do about it. That's, that was the way it was. According to his players, Pravlov pushed those limits further and further. Allegedly, he broke one player's arm with a hockey stick. Other players claimed he burned them with red-hot skate blades fresh from a skate sharpener. On other occasions, both Max Starchenko and Andre Lupandin claim they were beaten to unconsciousness. Lupandin says because Pravlov was unhappy with a sewing job that one of the boys' neighbors had done on the team's sweaters. So she did uh, half of them and brought it to the dressing room. He didn't like it all of a sudden, so he just lost it on me after practice. Beat, beat me up pretty bad. <laughs> I came home and uh, I went straight to bed and it was probably 12 o'clock in the afternoon after morning practice. And uh, my parents were surprised because my ears were bleeding and my ribs were blue and I just told them I got beat up by cops. Andre Lupandin was the first player to quit the Druzba 78 team in the summer of 1994. He says he escaped the beatings, but escaping Pravlov altogether was much more difficult. I still had probably nightmares for another year or so about Taiwan until I went to play for a different team and different guys and kind of forgot about him. <laughs> For Gennady Razin, the final straw came the following year while the team was playing a tournament in Montreal. Razin was 15 years old. He walked away from the team's hotel and lived on the street for an entire week until he was certain that Pravlov and the team had returned to Ukraine. Eventually, he moved in with his billet family in Alberta. I was ready to do anything that would keep me away from the coach. Not from the players, from not from the team. It was the coach, just the coach. You know, I, I spent a couple, you know, a couple nights on the streets, sleeping, you know, with with just a sweater on, in the middle of the winter in Montreal. But you know, it's just that's pretty much what I was willing to do. You know, to to go somewhere that I don't have money, I don't know anyone, I have no passport. I was ready, pretty much, to do anything to kind of get away from that situation. Ivan Pravlov continues to coach hockey in Ukraine. He declined our numerous invitations to speak on camera, but in a telephone interview, he told me that he thinks the accusations against him are, quote, garbage. Pravlov feels the boys of Druzba 78 conspired against him, initially to stay in North America, and now to somehow profit from the publicity. Unfortunately for Pravlov, the accusations against him continue to mount. As recently as 1999, another 12-year-old boy playing on a Druzba 87 team walked away from a hockey tournament in Minneapolis and swore to police that he and his teammates had been beaten on several occasions by Ivan Pravlov. Pravlov has never been charged with abuse nor sanctioned by any hockey governing body. This has to be a fairly recent picture, eh? Walter Babby isn't surprised by the lack of action against Pravlov. He says in the two years as tour organizer, he never witnessed any violent behavior nor even suspected it. He believes in hindsight that he and many others were fooled into thinking that success on the ice translated into harmony off of it. I've asked that of the players. I said, how come I didn't see some of these things happening? He said he was very careful when he did this strictly incompetence inside the dressing room doors and uh, the kids were sworn to secrecy uh, in fear I think not so much sworn to secrecy you know because of the alliance the allegiance to the team but certainly sworn to secrecy simply because of the fear you know manifested by Ivan Pravilov. Now far removed from that fear there's no question that hockey and life 
are much different than they were under Coach Pravlov's rule. I really can say that while I'm practicing, I can smile. While I'm practicing, I can really talk to coach, really uh, throw a few jokes around with him, you know, and laugh about it. With Ivan, it was totally different case. It was like, a, I would say, behind the curtain, iron curtain. Yeah. With uh, a few of them, he is very happy. Even for Walter Babby, life after Ivan Pravlov is different. Learning about the player's abuse deeply affected him. And he says he was haunted by not realizing what went on behind closed doors. In an attempt to exercise those ghosts, Babby wrote a book about his experience with Druzba 78. Kind of wrote these notes and threw them in the box and you know, I, I liken it to Pandora's box and I said, someday I would have to release these voices. It appears those voices have fallen on deaf ears. The Ukrainian Hockey Federation stands behind Pravlov, calling the accounts of abuse unsubstantiated rumors. Pravlov currently runs a very successful hockey school in Ukraine. The Canadian Hockey Association, Hockey USA and the International Ice Hockey Federation are all aware of the accusations against Ivan Pravlov, but all say they are powerless to take action without hard evidence. Even the players have different thoughts about what should be done next. However, all agree there has been enough violence. It has to be addressed. It has to be addressed and as soon as possible um, because it cannot, cannot be tolerated like this. Obviously, it's not right what he did and I, I don't agree with it. But there's not many coaches that I have met that uh, you know, have given so much to the players. You know what, if I would meet him here or in Ukraine, I don't think I would touch him. Like there is a Russian say, don't touch uh, all shit if it doesn't smell because you're gonna touch it and it's gonna start smelling again. Same with Ivan.